Distillation is a purification technique used to separate components of a mixture or to purify an impure liquid by taking advantage of the component's boiling points. Boiling points are a physical property of the compound and can be used to identify an unknown. There are several types of distillations. We have simple, fractional, simple high vacuum, and steam distillation. Although today, we will be focusing on simple distillation and fractional distillation. You will either be doing a simple distillation, which is procedure one, or a fractional distillation, procedure two, on a cyclohexane toluene mixture. After the lab, you will be graphing your data and sharing it with some of your benchmates. And then you will graph each set of data and be able to compare the effectiveness of simple distillation versus fractional distillation on the mixture you were given. Simple distillations work best for components that have boiling points that differ by at least 75 degrees, while fractional distillation can be used on boiling points of the components that are closer together. Unlike simple distillation, fractional distillation uses a fractionally column. This column can be packed with material so as to increase the surface area for heat exchange, thus increasing the number of theoretical plates. Remember, a theoretical plate is one cycle of vaporization and condensation. Therefore, the more amount of theoretical plates you have, the better the separation and purification of the compound. This is the setup for a fractional distillation. If you wanted to set up for a simple distillation, all you have to do is remove the fractioning column. As you can see here, we have a fractioning column that's attached to a round bottom flask, a 100 milliliter round bottom flask, and you'll be adding 25 milliliters of cyclohexane and 25 mill milliliters of toluene, plus your boil easers, your boiling chips. You'll have that round bottom flask in your heater with sand in it. The sand will help insulate, insulate the heat and allow the round bottom flask to heat up more evenly. Also, you'll be putting your heater on a cork. This will be easier in the end when you need to remove. Connect the heating mantle to the transformer, which will then be connected to the outlet. You want to make sure your transformer works by plugging it into the outlet and turning it on to see if the light appears. To the fractional column is the distill head. Above that is the thermal, thermometer adapter and the thermometer. You want to make sure that the thermometer scale is pointed so you can read it. Also, the thermometer, the tip of the thermometer is all the way down to the end of the distill head below where the condenser will attach. You want to make sure that this is where your thermometer is placed so that you know the temperature of the gas when it is goes into the condenser. Attached to the side of the distill head is the condenser itself. As you can see, you'll have water in on the right side and water out on the left side. As you move down, you will then be attaching the vacuum adapter. This is where the receiving flask will go under. Your entire apparatus needs to be clamped in all places and secure it tightly to the bench. Also, as you can see, this is the fractionally column setup, but you'll need to you'll be wrapping your fractioning column in cotton and then wrapping aluminum foil around that. You'll do this so that you can insulate the system so you do not lose any heat. As you can see, our mixture is already starting to boil, so you want to turn down the power slightly, making sure that you're heating it slowly. As you can see, our mixture is starting to boil. We have wrapped the column in the cotton and then surrounded the cotton by aluminum foil. You want to make sure that your water out is also going into the drain. We don't want to have anything slip and make a mess over the bench. Now, as the mixture is boiling, 
you will be having a cycle of condensation and vaporization of the components. Since cyclohexane is highly volatile and low boiling, it will continually vaporize and then condense back as one theoretical plate. Then you will have mostly you will have mostly fractioned cyclohexane at the top, whereas your fractioned toluene will be at the bottom. This is how you'll separate out your cyclohexane from your toluene. Your toluene or your cyclohexane will then come up as vapor come up through here and in the condensing column will then again condense back to a liquid and you will collect it in your round in your graduated cylinder. Every two milliliters of cyclohexane you collect, you will record the temperature. You see the temperature is continually rising up. And you can see that it's starting to distill as you're getting vapor coming up through the distill head. Make sure you turn that your, your heat down a little bit in order to make sure that it's being heated very slowly. As you can see, we're starting to collect some of our cyclohexane in the graduated cylinder. You can also change to a smaller graduated cylinder to more accurately measure 2 milliliters. Once it hits 2 milliliters, you will be recording the temperature, which should be around 70 or 80 degrees. You can see the temperature continuing to rise as we collect more cyclohexane in our graduated cylinder. At the end, you'll have removed most of the solvent, but you need to make sure that you don't allow the round bottom flask to go to completely dry. 